Guys, what's going on? My name's Dave. This is Dick's 4x4 Garage. Thank you for joining me tonight in the garage. So behind me is my 2018 Jeep JLU Rubicon that has got some issues. So I was in Moab. I was in Moab. You're good on your back. I would just roll it out when you get it on the wall. And only that way you're only bumping one. You're still good back here. Yeah, because you got, so Dave, you got this far before that tire hits the wall. Uh, this tire's going to come up. That tire will hit about that far away. No. I mean, you felt what it felt like before. The only difference is once you feel this tire come up, go ahead and give it some gas. The worst thing that's going to happen is that that side's going to hit, and it's going to hit it in this way, and you're going to be where you were. Uh, Your nose left? isn't going to go that way. Busted a U-joint, replaced it on the trail, didn't have it in right, I had to pull it out, center it up, get the clip in right after I got back. And then now we got some issues here. So I hope that you can see there, you can see that cap has broken there. So sorry about the shaky camera, but anyways, that cap has broken there. So I'm going to get up in here and, uh, and get busy. So I'll take you along with me on the journey. We will bust this sucker out. Pop a new one up in there, yeah. Sound like a good idea for tonight? It does, so let's do it, because I'm going wheeling on Sunday. All right, guys, so there's a couple tools in particular that you're going to need to handle this job. One of them is going to be a sludge, a hammer, and a vise, so it's nice to have a vise. You can actually, uh, you can hammer the whole thing in if you wanted to, if you're out on the trail. It can be done. The one big thing that you're going to need is this 36 millimeter right here. Oh, actually, this is a 35, my bad, 35 millimeter. So you put that up on there, so that's going to get that off. So I've got it on the ground right now. It's not up in the air, so let's go ahead. We'll bust this loose. We'll take the lugs off, and we'll go from there. Got our 22. We'll go ahead and bust these suckers loose here. All right, so the key to this is you want to jack this side up a little bit. That way the fluid in the axle kind of goes that way a little bit then when you pull the axle out you're not going to have grease coming out the tube so you don't want to like have it even or you know just do this side that way when you pull the axle out everything will just chill up in there and you ain't going to like worry about losing any fluid so if you're out on the trail make sure that this side is up higher than the other side that's like the best way to do it all right let's see Alright, so the cool thing is to get this sucker in a position, get it to where your tire's right there, so it's going to actually come in handy, so I don't have a jack stand up underneath it right now. So if you're out on the trail doing this, you can slip your tire up under here. So at least if it falls, you know, your control arm will come down right here, and you'll be good to go. When we take the caliper bracket off, we can just set the caliper right down there, and then we'll be good to go. So. We'll get, uh, we'll finish getting this nut off here and we'll go further. So next up we want to get the caliper brackets off. So we'll go ahead and get those off right now. And those are going to be, I believe 18 millimeters. They might be bigger though. Hold on. 
All right, my bad. They are 21 millimeters. So let's get in here and get these bad boys off. See if I can get you, get you a little light up in there. Extension, yeah, it ain't too bad. Now, don't be going inside the vehicle and pressing the brakes down or anything silly like that while you're doing this. Otherwise, you're just going to create more work for yourself. But if you don't, and you shouldn't, anyways, all you do is you take this mugger off like so. And you just put it right there. So now it's not it's not stressing your brake line, you're not hanging it off. Perfect platform to set it down on. Three of these 12 point 13 millimeter bolts that go through. So you got one here, one here, and there's one over on the back side here. So that's really it. So we did um, we took the bolt off of here, we removed the the wheel, we took two bolts out of the caliper and then we took three bolts out of the back here now this part's a little interesting so there's a, an actual like a, a shield back here it's just like a tin shield and uh, it's kind of cut out for the caliper um, and it just kind of sits back there and so there's three like 10 millimeter bolts holding it on so all you really got to do is get this out enough because you see here there's a wire for the ABS and so it's kind of a pain to get in there with all the stuff and what I should have done first hold on what I should have done first is actually release it from the bracket so that we actually have a little bit more a little bit more play here so I'll do that now and um, then you take your 10 millimeter, probably a shorter one preferably, but you just go ahead and get this guy out here. And nice and easy. I don't know where my I don't know where she went. She went somewhere down here, I think. But anyway, so now you can you can push the shield. You can get let the wire pass. And you can take this bad boy. Try not to crush the wire. Set it right there. So it's just kind of like nice and out of the way. Like I said, if you're on a trail, depending on what position you're in, uh, what we ended up doing is uh, we zip tied it up here, out of the way, and it was good to go. So you don't actually have to take the whole dust shield off. So here's there's the three 10 millimeter bolts. But, so what you want to do, so you got to remember there's a seal in here. And so the seal is actually up um, next to the carrier inside of the axle tube. And when you're pulling this axle out, you kind of want to support it a little bit because you don't want to tear the seal and you don't want to put too much pressure. So if you can kind of support the axle just a little bit until you get past the seal. So like we're like well past the seal now. And then bango flango, we're up out of there. So let's take it to the bench. Let's see what happens. All right, so we got this sucker up on the bench. We're going to need a sledgehammer for this part, and we are going to need to pop these clips out. So I'm going to go grab me a screwdriver, and we're going to get these clips out of here. There's these clips right here that are up in the groove. So this one is out. This one... It's going to be out, I hope, soon. Sometimes they're a little bit tight. You might have to just give her a little love tapping. I don't know if this screwdriver's going to do it, but yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, just like that. Just like that. So we got two clips out. And we'll spin her around, and we'll get these clips out so you can see where... It's actually broken right there, the cap, which kind of sucks. I just put this thing up in there. So that clips out. Nope, bumped you there. 
And then we're going to get this clip out if we can. I think the problem was this whole thing was just in here a little bit too tight and it was causing causing me some issues. There's really not much holding these in, so it you know, it shouldn't really take too much effort to to pop them out. It's just hung up there. So clips are out. All right, so I'm going to show you how I do this. And uh, if you have a press or whatever, you might want to just take it to the press. But uh, this is how I do it. It usually works pretty well. What you want to do is you want to spread the vise wide enough to where this is sitting firmly on it. But then this is actually going to rotate freely. And then you take your sludgy and you give her a whack of dacious. Okay, then you flip her over. Damn, son. That thing was beat. That thing. Isn't that crazy or what? Right, so we got that out. We popped that out of the other shaft after we got that out. Look at all that. Oh, man. I don't know if something got in there or it wasn't right, or but there was something, there was something going on. I think it was just too tight up in there. I don't know. But anyway, so next up is the same thing on this side. Squeeze the vise together a little bit. Make sure this moves. Make sure that's there. You don't give a shit about that U-joint anymore. So, give it the whacking. Just like that. Pop your cap. Don't be popping caps, but you know what I'm saying. Pop the cap out. And then do this side. That's it. That's it, man. And uh, U-joint's out. So... Let's go ahead and check this sucker out here. I have, when I broke it, there's some burrs up in here that I might want to hit up with the file to uh, to get out. Um, that side feels pretty good. I think it's just really kind of just this side that's got a little few burrs in it. And then let's see this side. I think this shaft was actually, it might have been okay, but maybe not. Let's see. Because, you know, when it breaks, you know, they smash together a little bit. So, yeah, you can see how it's kind of dented up there. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a just take a file to it real quick. This side seems okay. Look how, like, chewed up that is right there. That's, like, crazy to me. I don't know how that happened. That, I don't know what happened there. But, all right, I'm going to just clean it up a little bit, and then uh, we'll pop her back in and put it back in the Jeep. Got a couple little burrs going on. And it don't, you know, it don't take much. You just gotta, you know. All right, so here's our new U joint. Let's see here. So I got. A beautiful new U-joint. Let's hope this sucker lasts a little while. So there we go. So you can see where the clips actually snap in here. Or they just kind of set in there, basically. And then all these suckers, all these suckers come off like that. And then there's needle bearings up inside. And then there's a little rubber, I don't know if it's like a little damper that's down in there, or just a little rubber washer. But make sure you have that in there when you put your caps back in and uh, you won't have any issues. So I'm gonna set that aside right now. So a couple different ways to do this. Like I said, if you got a press, do it in a press if you can. Um, easiest way is just to do it in the vise. So I'm gonna get this into position here. All right, so here we go. We got our U-joint. So what you're gonna wanna do first is you will take two of the caps off on each corner. And like I said, you just want to try to keep it as clean as possible. There's little needle bearings in there, so always be aware when you're putting them on to be as easy as possible. We will get our cap, our one cap, and we're just going to lightly start squeezing it into place just a little bit just to kind of get it going. 
so it shouldn't it shouldn't really like go crooked on you um, but it, it could I suppose so then you'll take your U joint make sure you're up high enough so then you'll take your your U joint here and get it in this hole and get it up in there and then you can take another cap making sure that your little plastic washers on there get that up in place and then what I like to do is I'll take the u-joint and I'll slip it I'll slip it back in to kind of both of them I guess if you will like as much as possible make sure that everything is as straight as you can get it so I'm gonna pull this one out real quick and double check make sure everything's cool with it but I think it is so I'll go ahead and push it over slip it over just a little bit right in the middle so it kinda of holds all the needle bearings in place and then you just put it in your vise and squeeze so this side started going right now everything is moving like see the U joints the U joints cool it's moving around there's no binding going on now it's going to start pushing everything into place and we don't want to go too tight with it but we want to make sure we can get our clip on there and then we want to make sure we can get our clip there okay so you can see like everything's moving around everything's jiving everything feels okay so we really just have to squeeze it into place so now both of them snapped in both of them look like they're seating nice and easy right up on there all right so on this side we're just going to do we're going to do the same thing. Put it up in there. We'll get our get our deal up in here. Bang. So pretty easy, pretty simple easy process putting it in. The one thing you want to do is when you're going in, the tube is dirty, so there's a bunch of crap in it. So when you're putting it back in there, you don't want to get a bunch of crap in your differential. So go ahead and hold it up as you slide it in to keep it from actually like touching inside of the tube like you see there. I didn't do it good enough and it it caught and didn't get a bunch of stuff on it. So that's good. Cuz you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be eating up your differential. So we'll go ahead and do the best we can here. And once we get up in there, you'll feel it go past the seal, you'll hear it. And so the one thing we gotta make sure we do is we gotta slip the ABS cable up and through there. We'll slip this under like that. Put that bolt back in here for the shield. Bango flango baby. Just like that. Alright guys, I hope you dug the video. I don't normally do a lot of Jeep videos as far as working on them. But she's getting a little older. She's about a year and a half old. And Things are gonna be breaking soon because I will the uh, I will the crap out of it, <laughs> and I love it. I love this thing. Anyways, uh, you guys take it easy. Catch you next time.